We're going to look at the insertion of dynamic and non-dynamic blocks and the advantages that you have with dynamic blocks. In this drawing, I need to insert a toilet symbol that can be, go into the bathroom. Now I do have a non-dynamic block that's in this drawing, so I'm going to use my insert command. And I could choose this from the menu. PV means plan view. Um, I can, in this insert box, specify that I want to um, specify the rotation when it's inserted. And you can see now I have the uh, toilet attached to my cursor. I'll pick an insertion point, the midpoint on that wall, and then I can pick an orientation for rotation. And visually I can see how it's going to line up. Now this toilet's been inserted and it is a plane it is essentially this symbol for the toilet and it has no dynamic properties. In working with non-dynamic blocks, I can click on them and move them or rotate them or if I want to change their size they can be scaled but if I wanted to change its actual appearance I would have to explode it back into its original entities edit those entities and then remake it into a block. We'll look at the behavior of dynamic blocks when we insert them into our drawing. I'm going to the view tab and I'm going to choose the tool palette on my tool palette, AutoCAD comes preloaded with some sample blocks. Under Architectural, I find that I have a toilet. And notice the lightning bolt next to this block name, which indicates to me that it is a dynamic block. I'm going to click on the toilet and bring it into my drawing and click once to insert it. Now you notice that it's in elevation view. When I click on this block, it has parameters that are built into it. I can see the base point right here, but I also have an arrow that indicates that I can flip from front, front to side view in the elevation view, and I have a drop-down menu that shows me that it can represent not only multiple views, such as an elevation or a plan view, such as a floor plan, but it can also represent different types of toilets or different shapes. So I'm going to change from the front view to a plan view so that it matches my floor plan and again I have parameters that I can set rotation I can align it to other objects or I can change it into those other shapes we'll use the align I'm going to bring it over and align it with the midpoint of that wall now I can see it's facing the wrong direction so I can use its, its rotation parameter to rotate it around and correct its orientation. Once it's in place, I can not only change location, but I can also change what kind of toilet is represented. Here is a round fronted toilet in a plan view. So I can just as easily pick off the menu and quickly change its shape and have it represent a different shape of toilet. So dynamic blocks can carry a lot of different information, and they're all in there designed by the parameters, things like rotation, alignment, and multiple objects that will be visible depending upon the parameters that are chosen. Uh, let's take a fluorescent fixture, for example. I'm going to place a fluorescent fixture in the dining area. When I click on it, you can see that I can dynamically snap it to predetermined sizes or I can pick off the uh, the menu the drop down the exact size that I want it to be. One other feature that uh, dynamic blocks can carry is their insertion point. Here I have a stud. This is a stud in plan view looking straight down. So I'm going to zoom into this corner and Notice how the, the stud, I can find the, uh, the snap point there for insertion on the end point of that line. But this stud has multiple base points or insertion points, and I can visibly see them by hitting the control key, and I can tab through the different insertion points. And I can choose the one 
that I want that represents where I want it and then click and it's put into place. Then once it's placed I can click on it and you notice that I can rep have representations of different sizes and I can manually change it to set sizes so now I have a double or a triple stud put together and represent it. So dynamic blocks in themselves save a lot of time. They also save um, a lot of room in your symbol libraries because uh, you can make your blocks dynamic and have multiple objects contained within one block that you can choose off of a menu. And you can have multiple insertion points to make it quicker to insert these into the drawing in the correct place.